From that small lot of junker systems I picked up, we're now going to take a look at the two Nintendo Wiis. Apparently they don't read discs, but I'm going to test it for myself and make a note of what the issue is for each one. So that didn't sound good and it didn't read the disc. Let's see if you can hear this. And it will not read the disc. So we'll make a note of that and check the second one. This one sounds better. It does show the game. Oh, that's not good. So this one recognizes the game, however, when it actually tries to run it, it starts doing that grinding thing. So we'll make a note of that on this one, and proceed to take a closer look at both of these. So we have the Wii's here, labeled by their issue. Number one recognizes the disc, but does that hard grinding noise, and number two won't recognize the disc at all. Number two may be a dirty lens type of issue. But number one, I think there might be something wrong with the optical drive system itself just because of that noise it was making. I think I'm going to go straight to taking these apart, and I'm going to start with number one. This one's already missing one of the rubber feet. Two and a half millimeter tri-wing. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, there is a ribbon cable that we'll need to be careful of. Hmm. All right, we've separated the drive from the system. So this thing, I'm gonna move over here. Well, unfortunately we have a mystery piece that fell out. I have no idea where this came from. Move over. Move you out of the way. So luckily I found the spot where this piece fell out. Right in here, just kind of sits there. We'll leave it out for now. Let's start taking it apart on this side. So there's a little metal clip right there. There's probably a few of them. I'll undo those. And in here we found something quite interesting. There's a small black piece right here that was loose. Now, I may have jostled that on my own, but something that sticks out to me is this white epoxy material is kind of ground down right there. I wonder if that noise we were hearing is something skipping and not working right and grinding away that material. Now, I don't actually know what this piece does or where it originally came from. I'm curious to just put this roughly back together and test it and see if there's any, any difference. What are the odds? It's a dumb piece of plastic. It's working. Let's get this thing back together. No. 
We just broke a motor wire. Gonna have to fix that. All right, it's all under there. Get that out. Put this piece back in that keeps falling out. There we go. And this feeds through it. Slide it in. This is the part I've been dreading. Not sure how I'm gonna get that back through its original strain relief. There we go. Then we're gonna plug it in and tuck it down. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. That'll be fine. Flip it over. We'll reinstall this into the Wii itself. Flip that lever up. Put that in, it feels like doesn't even contact, but when you close it, it's good. That one goes in. She's back together. Let's give her the final test. Well, it looks like we're all good. Somehow this tiny piece of plastic got wedged in the drive and caused it to stop its motion to go where it needed to go. Removing that solved the problem. Hopefully this wasn't essential to some other functionality of the device, but apparently it's not, because everything's working great. And with that, the first Wii is fixed. All right, it's been a couple days since I've returned to the designated Nintendo Wii repair ping pong table. After thinking on this over the last couple nights, I'm concerned that since this console doesn't have such a disturbing grinding noise when you try to turn it on, that the issue might actually be more difficult to diagnose and potentially even a bad optical drive. I'm gonna skip all the steps of me taking this apart since you just saw that for the first one, and we'll go right to the point where I find something interesting. Well, we're inside the optical drive assembly on this one, and there's a couple things I'm noticing. First, the motion of this is pretty stiff. It takes quite a bit of force to get that to move. And I'm starting to think that's the main issue, is something is binding this up and it either doesn't have enough force in the motor to get where it needs to go, or just the fact that it has to fight it so much is causing problems. So the action on the slide is definitely rougher than on the previous one. Another thing I saw, which is maybe not an issue, is there seems to be some solder on this flex ribbon. But it doesn't appear to be bridging the conductors, so I don't think there is an electrical issue there, and if there were, I'm sure we might have some other problems, um, maybe. But I will clean that up with some alcohol. Hmm. Nothing obviously wrong. There. Pull this out the other end, get our hands all greasy, and that can come away now. 
Okay. Pretty confident that this motor is bad. I believe it to be a servo motor, um, since it needs to control the position of this lens probably pretty precisely. I do know servo motors can go bad in this way. It actually happened to me in one of my previous videos where it stopped and I had, and you really had to force it to get the motion going. So I don't know exactly what causes that, but if that is indeed the problem with this one, then it's kind of toast and you pretty much probably just need to replace the whole optical drive. So all I'm going to do to attempt to make this a little better is run this back and forth like this a number of times and then I'm just going to put everything back together. I will clean the lens as well. I'm going to clean off this thing I pointed out earlier with alcohol and a toothbrush just to make sure that it's clean and there's not a shorting point right there. really have no idea why that is there on this one. I don't think there even was a screw there, so I'm going to leave that. And if there was, I think two is enough. I don't expect this to work anyway. That should be close enough. Oh, good thing I didn't put that third screw in, because it's for right there. I'll feed these back through. I think I showed the reassembly process from here in the first system, so I'm going to skip to testing it. Okay, we have the drive temporarily inserted. It's not bolted down or anything. Let's test what happens. Don't have high hopes here. Yeah, it's still making that funky noise. That's it. No dice. So here I'm assuming the optical drive unit is just bad, and it probably makes more sense to replace it entirely. So we're going to call this a lost cause. I think I will do some component swapping so I have at least one good one in the best condition it can be in. Well at the end of the day, we ended up with one out of two good. That's not so bad. I'm a little disappointed we couldn't fix this one, but it's the way she goes sometimes. And I did take all the stuff from this one that this one was missing, such as rubber feet, the metal shield, uh, various screws, and got it put back together nicely. I haven't cleaned it up yet though. But I will do that and probably try to get rid of these pretty cheap, especially this one. Someone who's just looking for parts. My strong suspicion on this one is that the motor driving that lens is faulty and hence it can't get where it needs to go. And at that point, if that's true, you might as well just replace the whole drive unit itself since I don't think you can get the individual components very easily. At least not as easily as you could just get a new drive. And I don't imagine they cost that much. Well, maybe they do these days. Who knows? So that's it. I hope you got something out of this and enjoyed. And thanks for watching. Oh, whoops. There we go.